You write in the book that um, Niemöller was arrested and became Hitler's personal uh, prisoner. Um, why was he arrested? What does it mean he was Hitler's? I, it seems that it speaks to his prominence at the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's interesting. Um, why why really did that happen? Him. And what was his experience in the uh, concentration? Yeah, so Niemöller really got under the skin of Nazi leaders. Um, if you read through uh, Joseph Goebbels' diaries, the minister of propaganda and an absolute um, rabid anti-Semite, um, he frequently is, is, is irate about Niemöller. So Niemöller um, is... Uh, um, accused of using his pulpit in Berlin for political reasons. And one of the things Niemöller did was from the pulpit, he would occasionally um, criticize the Nazi leadership. He would do it in a somewhat roundabout way by saying, you know, the Nazi leadership has um, not kept up to its promises. And he was referring to the fact that in 1933, Hitler agreed to more or less leave the churches alone and not to interfere in their business. And so when he did, this led to Niemöller's opposition. And so Niemöller would say things like this publicly. He would also name um, the pastors and Christians who had been arrested from the pulpit, which was something he was not supposed to do. So on July 1st, 1937, um, the Gestapo arrive at his house while well, his wife and his kid and him are having breakfast and they arrest him and they take him first to Alexander Plotz, the Gestapo headquarters. And after a short interrogation there, he's taken to Moabit prison in downtown Berlin. And this is when he realizes that the typical arrest where he might be interrogated for two or three hours was not happening and that he was being held. And so he remained in Moabit prison in Berlin for approximately eight months. And then he was tried in um, a trial in February of 1938. And oddly, he was found pretty much innocent. Um, he was found guilty of one charge of using the pulpit for political reasons. He was fined a certain number of marks. He was sentenced to seven months in prison, which he had already served. And so he was released. Um, as he left the courthouse to return to the prison where he was going to pick up his belongings, when he arrived at the prison, Hitler and Goebbels, who had been back and forth with one another on the phone, had agreed to get in touch with Heinrich Himmler, who arrested him um, as he was at the returning to the prison to collect his belongings. And then they um, took him um, through the back door, actually, uh, to Sachsenhausen concentration camp in Berlin. Um, and Sachsenhausen concentration camp was a whole nother matter from um, Moabit prison. Um, his experience in Sachsenhausen lasted from 1938 until 1941, and it was a really miserable experience for him. He was allowed to write some letters back and forth now and then. He was allowed a couple, he was allowed visitors, um, his wife, every few weeks, but he was held in solitary confinement. His cell was very small, very sparse. He was lonely, he was depressed, his health deteriorated. Um, he was not in good shape. Um, at a certain point, he felt like the Protestant church in Germany had abandoned him to a certain extent. He contemplated um, converting to Catholicism. He ended up not doing that. While he was in Sachsenhausen, his father died. Um, so there's just a lot of things that were very difficult for him. Um, in July of 1941, they transferred him and a lot of other high-ranking Catholic and Protestant clergy from all over different concentration camps to Dachau. Um, and so from 1941 until 1945, he was housed in Dachau, which of course is a notoriously horrible concentration camp. Um, but oddly enough, Niemöller's um, life in Dachau improved immensely. He was housed on a wing with other prominent prisoners, several of whom were Catholic hierarchy in the German Catholic Church. And they were allowed to move about from one cell to another, uh, walk up and down the hallway. They could play cards in a particular room. They consecrated a cell as a chapel so they could have um, various types of services. Um, th sometimes they would 
people would deliver um, food to them. They could use a library. So his life just improved immensely in Dachau, which is a strange thing to say, but it did. And his mood uh, improved um, greatly. He's a very outgoing guy, very personable, wants to be talking to people, communicating with people. So this really did a lot for his um, uh, his, his sense of self and, and his mood. Um, Dachau housed at this time in a certain area, a lot of prominent prisoners. So some German generals who had fell out of favor with Hitler were housed there. Uh, the former premier of France, Leon Blum was there. The former chancellor of Austria was there with his family, his wife and his young daughter. So there were a lot of prominent prisoners held in Dachau. And I think the idea was that, is that Dachau is in the south of Germany. It's only a small trip to get into Austria or Northern Italy which is um, a region um, where, where the Alps exist and that they might be able to use these prisoners at some point to, to um, negotiate with uh, the Americans eventually. So his experience in the concentration camps, therefore, is mixed. Um, he was obviously being in a concentration camp is, is a horrible existence no matter where you are, but he, it did improve once he got to Dachau. 